In this online lecture, we're going to talk about how to predict the direction of acid-base reactions. And what we're going to see here, our key point is, is that acid-base reactions always proceed from a low pKa to a high pKa. In other words, they always go from a strong acid to a weak acid. This is an extremely important skill in organic chemistry, so let's talk about how to do this. Here are the principles. Let's say you have this acid-base reaction. And let's label everybody here. This would be the acid, HA, water is playing the role as the base. And of course, we get the corresponding conjugate acid and conjugate base. To determine the direction of an acid-base reaction, we should focus on the acid here on the reactant side and the conjugate acid on the product side. An acid-base reaction will proceed from left to right if you're going from a lower pKa acid to a higher pKa acid. In other words, going from a strong acid to a relatively weaker acid. So this is what we're always investigating when we're trying to determine the direction of an acid-base reaction. So let's put this to work here. Let's look at a sample problem. Will the following reaction proceed in the direction indicated from left to right? Well, the first thing we should do is get to know our reaction. Notice, look at this species right here. He started out like this, but then he turned into this right here. Notice, it looks like he lost a hydrogen, or we can say he donated a hydrogen. And using the Bronsted and Lowry definition, that would basically mean he's behaving as the acid. Now it's easy to fill in the rest. If he's the acid, then this must be his conjugate base. And this must be the base here on the reactant side, making this, over here, the conjugate acid. So now that everything's labeled, what we compare here, remember, is the acid on the reactant side and the conjugate acid on the product side. What are their relative pKa's? Well, remember, pKa's are constants. We would look them up in a textbook, let's say. And the pKa for this acid happens to be 16. And the pKa for this acid happens to be 9.2. So notice, our acid on the reactant side has a higher pKa, and our conjugate acid on the product side has a lower pKa. And we know reactions go from low to high pKa. So therefore, this reaction will not proceed in the direction as indicated. What we can say, however, is that this reaction would be more favored to go in this particular direction, from right to left. Later on in organic chemistry, there are times when we're going to need to quickly evaluate something like this. So let's look at another example here. Will the following reaction proceed in the direction as indicated? Again, let's get to know our reaction here. This HF is turning into apparently F minus, which means he's donating a proton or giving it up. That's going to make him the acid right here. And that, of course, makes this his conjugate base. And that makes the NH3, of course, the base. And this is his conjugate acid on the right. So now we know the two things to compare. We compare the acid on the left to the conjugate acid on the right. If we looked up their corresponding pKa values, we would notice that HF has a pKa of 3.2. And NH4 plus, remember, has the pKa of 9.2. Notice in this sense, from left to right, you are going from a lower pKa to a higher pKa. That means this reaction will proceed in the direction as indicated. So notice this is a very straightforward, easy skill. However, there's actually another way to determine the direction of an acid-base reaction. And what this method involves is basically this equation right here. And that is the KEQ of an acid-base reaction is the value of the Ka of the reactant acid divided by the Ka of the product acid. In other words, the product acid is the conjugate acid. So let me show you how this works. Look at HF. Remember, he has a pKa of 3.2. That means his Ka would be a value of 10 to the negative 3.2. All I'm doing to calculate the Ka from the pKa is taking the inverse log of 3.2. Because think about it. P means, remember, the negative log of. So the negative log of 10 to the negative 3.2 is 3.2.
Let's do the same thing for the conjugate acid on the product side here. His Ka value would simply be 10 to the negative 9.2. So now we have the Ka of the reactant acid and the Ka of the product acid. Let's plug them into our formula. KEQ equals the Ka of the reactant acid divided by Ka of product acid. Dividing these values, what you end up with is 10 to the 6. Now, if you remember from general chemistry, having a large KEQ value, such as 10 to the 6, means that that reaction is very favorable. Remember, KEQ in general chemistry was the concentration of products over reactants. So if you have a high KEQ, it means you have, at equilibrium, a lot more products than you do reactants. And having a lot more products than reactants means a reaction is favorable. Now, obviously, the first method of determining the direction of an acid-base reaction is much easier than using this equation. But just in case your organic chemistry test goes in this direction, I just want to make sure you would know how to handle it. So what's our key point here? Simply that acid-base reactions always proceed from a low pKa to a relatively high pKa. In other words, from a strong acid to a weak acid.